With the release of Beta Flight 4.4 and the improvements to GPS Rescue, you start to see a lot more people willing to add GPS to their 5-inch freestyle builds. As a result of this, Flywoo have released some updated GPS modules, and today we're going to be taking a look at this, the GM10 Mini. Now this is a small GPS module designed to be used with Beta Flight, and what we'll do is take a look at what's included in the pack, walk you through some of its features and spec, get it set up, and show you its behaviour in both U-Center as well as Beta Flight. Now, just to be clear, Flywoo have sent me this GPS for free, however they've not seen this video before it's been published and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this new module is all about. Okay, so what we have here is one of three new GPS modules from Flywoo. Now we're going to see a lot more GPS modules hit the market really specifically designed for Beta Flight over the next few months just because of the improvements that have been made in Beta Flight 4.4 to the failsafe or GPS rescue features. If you haven't seen, I actually have a dedicated video on that. I'll put a link to that in the description. The Beta Flight dev team have done an amazing job of improving the return to home or the GPS rescue and it really is now something that you be can begin to rely on and with the cost of drones today, with the cost of these digital VTXs, having a reliable failsafe option on board is going to be critical and these GPS modules are going to be what people are going to want to use. Now, as I've said, there are three versions of this module available. The Groku GM10 Pro, the GM10 Mini, and the GM10 Nano, all version 3s. The difference between this and the Pro is that the Pro comes with a compass, and this one is the standard GPS version without compass on board. All three versions support the M150 chipset. Size-wise, this one is 18 by 18 by just 4.8 mil tall, and it is one of the more narrower GPS modules that I've seen on the market today, and weighs just 4.5 grams. It's got that nice large GPS antenna on the top as well, which covers the whole PCB, and connecting to it is nice and simple. We've got an SH1.0 4-pin connector here, but there is also pads down here that you can solder to if you want to as well. The module supports an input voltage range of 5 volts, and it supports GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, as well as a couple of others, but it comes preset to the default protocols of GPS, Galileo, and Beidou, and supports up to 72 channels or 32 satellites max. Configuration wise, it supports 1 to 10 hertz and it's default set at 10 hertz like most of the GPS modules. And the nice thing about this being that new M150 chipset is that it does have that up to 32 satellite capability and it's going to give you faster response but more precision than we've seen from the likes of the M8 modules. Now, fitting this module in your aircraft is fairly straightforward. It does come with a harness already, and the nice thing about that harness is it has a locking connector on too. So you actually have a little button on the top of the connector there, so when you put it in place, it locks in and it's absolutely solid. And they also show you the pinout along the back on the sticker as well. And like any GPS module, you would simply connect it to a free UR on your flight controller. Now using this module in beta flight is fairly straightforward. You simply need to configure it on the UART you have it set to, to GPS, and set the board rate to 115200. And then when you go under GPS, you should then see that it is showing connected. It should then show you the lock with the SAT count located down below and all of the usual details up here. Taking a look at the GPS's module performance in U-Center 2, if you don't know what U-Center is, it is the GPS software from U-Blox that allows us to view the module's performance in a lot more detail. Now, it's been warmed up for about a minute, a minute and a half, and you can see here that we're picking up 16 satellites, of which it's using 4 in total for navigation and it's picking up more and more as time goes on. We can then test this module for both warm start and cold start behavior. For instance, warm start is a soft reboot retaining the previous GPS location data, which means it will simply reboot and try to acquire the satellites where it thought they were before. And then you've got the cold start option, which will completely erase the internal data. And then it would need to download the data from the satellites first to allow it to then understand where they are positioned. So for instance, if we do a hot start test, you will see it will reboot very quickly and within a second or so we are already back up and running and locked and then if I do a cold start you will see that it will completely shut down and then start to reacquire the satellites one at a time and then build up a picture and build up its lock. 
there you can see it was able to get a 3d fix in about a minute from a cold start compared to a warm start which is almost instantaneous now the price of this module in the uk is coming at 14 pound 71 gb or in the us we're looking at just under 18 dollars overall i think it's a good price for an m10 series gps module and you're going to see these small new updated modules with the m10 chipset becoming really popular as we see the proliferation of these new versions of beta flight with the improved return to home performance Okay, so just to quickly share with you some thoughts. Overall, I think it's a great module. And I think the price is decent as well. I have noticed in the last few months, GPS pricing has been going up and up. And to have a module for under $20 or under £20, I think is a no-brainer. It's nice that we're now seeing the proliferation of the M10 chipset out more and more. And we're seeing these new smaller, lighter, low-power modules with better performance hit the market. And I think if you're looking for a GPS module for your freestyle or quad build, there's no reason not to choose this one i've done quite a lot of testing with this on the bench not only here but with the avatar system as well and i think it does a really good job so if you're interested in getting one i will put a link to it in the description of this video i just want to say a thank you to flywoo for sending this one over nothing bad here all good i do like the fact it has a little latching connector as well i do like the fact it's got pads so if you're interested in getting one please do consider checking it out now that's it from me on this one and just before we finish up i just want to say if you have found this video interesting please do consider supporting the channel either via patreon or buy me a coffee if you're not subscribed don't forget to hit the subs button as well and i'm really interested in hearing your thoughts if you've got any comments please do put them in the section below and i'll try and answer any questions you may have as well anyway that's it from me stay safe i'll speak to you soon